Ooh, the Shiragani residence. Why do I feel like he's the kind of guy to prepare lunch for his sister, too? Kei Shiragani wants to show off. Look at them getting along for once. Nothing special in Takayaki stall is an oxymoron. He's even got the apron. I have a feeling he's going to be really popular with her friends. Oh, this is really sweet. This is frustration that masks concern. Hey, mad boy in the house. <laughs> what? He looks great. Oh no, I feel attacked. Nah, she's looking out for him though. She's trying to protect him. Ooh, Cloud Strife all of a sudden. <laughs> it, I mean, this is giving me merch ideas. I too would like to be a mad boy. I think I just like it because it looks so different for him. This is just evoking all these images of what it would be like to see mad boy Miyuki. <laughs> He's got it in him. Miyuki wouldn't go down this road just because he has such a clear vision of things and is super focused. But I think one of the best qualities that's been grown about his character in the show is that if he wants something, he'll find a way to get it. He'll find a way to do it. And people like that can surprise you in really fun ways. People like that can can grow outside of type. He could definitely become Mad Boy Miyuki. It's a route. You know, he's sort of a blank canvas in that way. He could become what Ino Miko misunderstands him to be or misunderstood him to be at first. I kind of want to take a look at the shirt though. You aren't supposed to give up the something that is in your soul. The person who thinks with an opinion is blindfolding by himself and is plugging the ear himself. I've seen a lot worse. This is all wrong. It's all wrong. <laughs> He's a linguist. Oh, dragon style! No, keep going. You, there's a point. You just keep going. You reach a critical distance where you look better. You gotta commit. <laughs> It still fits? That's why it's the wrong length. Honestly, this is relatable. I went to a school with uniforms and yeah, you feel it. Man, Miyuki just gets me. <laughs> Two sodas. <laughs> That's function. No, but a fanny pack? This is the improvement? Where do you wear it? On your face? Shoulder. It's sort of purse-like though. Ask Dad, I'm sure he has great fashion tips. See, I told you. Maybe if you put them all on. Put all of them on at the same time. Paint dragon style on it. Oh, hit her with that guilt trip. This is all for you. Do you buy clothes, Kay? <sighs> Oh, that's so sweet. I knew it. I knew it. That's the kind of thing that Kay is going to feel hella guilty about later. There's a certain way to do sacrifices that undoes the sacrifice. You know, if you do things for someone and then talk endlessly about how much you're doing for someone, the gesture is undermined somewhat. The issue is a lot of times people who make selfless sacrifices go unnoticed because they're not doing it for praise or admiration. They're doing it because that's what they want to do. Unfortunately, that ends up feeling like it's a normal thing to the, to the recipient. You know, I think this is big with parents and kids. Parents make all sorts of sacrifices that kids will never understand until hopefully later. And then when it hits you, you're just racked with guilt for not realizing all that you weren't seeing. You know, you, you picked up on all the things that you were unhappy about, maybe made a huge point of that, but didn't weigh the full picture accurately. And to let ourselves off the hook a little bit, you can't know what you don't know. And experience will, you know, often be the, the teacher in that regard. But yeah, I can't count how many times I've had realizations like this. And also, I think I've been on the other side. I felt this way in relationships where I felt like things I was doing, you know, really big sacrifices that I was making felt kind of normal. Whereas things that I was doing wrong were blown up and were not weighted against the full picture. And I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. I think just as an individual, you can be the good half of the equation by, you know, trying to see the full picture, being appreciative, trying to weigh things in full. And then also just sort of accepting that, it doesn't come from a bad place necessarily. A lot of times it's just lack of experience, ignorance to a certain degree. Kay just doesn't understand this or didn't understand this till now. I don't know if she even picked up on it fully. To Miyuki's point about going without stuff, this is really, really tricky, but I feel like it's such a key concept. It's really hard to do and people will be very defensive about this, but there are a lot of ways people get in their own way, I think, by not evaluating their wants and needs, overestimating how much they need certain things. You know, I felt that way a lot since I'm always on the road and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of challenges in that, a lot of challenges. I feel like recently that's all sort of come to a head for me. I'm kind of homeless right now. <laughs> 
But there are a lot of benefits to this life as well, and it's, it's very fulfilling overall. And I feel like I, I'm only able to do this because there are certain things I can go without, certain big things that when I talk to people who want to travel, they're not really able to question how much they need certain things. Having a certain amount of possessions, having a certain amount of stability, feeling like there's a place or community they can't leave because they feel like they'd be missing out. That's big for me as someone from New York City. New Yorkers are often by default very resistant to the idea of leaving New York City, partly because of the image they have of what it means to live there. And not to pretend like I always get this right, there are ways in which I, I fail to do this that definitely bring increased burdens of a certain type. And that is, as I'm realizing, I sort of have trouble being alone. Like I kind of always need some kind of romantic thing going. And I think if I could forgo that, there would be a lot of objective benefits. Whether or not one is more important than the other is tough. I'm sort of, sort of sorting that out. But at the very least, I'm aware that if I did find a way to make that manageable. There are a lot of other big things, big dreams that I have on the horizon that would be fulfilling that I could probably get closer to. And maybe in some perfect state I could do it all. But if there's a bottom line, I think that it's worth examining it. It's worth examining what are the actual goals? What are the things that actually would be most fulfilling? And what are the things that I think I need that turn out are getting in the way of all the things that I actually want? That makes sense. (laughs) <laughs> this could go in an interesting direction, but just trust in Daddy Shirogane. Oh, the watch. Wait, for real? How did he get his hands on this? Is this a lie? Ooh, is that the best investment for your family? Speaking of re-examining priorities, but if that's all true, giving it to his son is a big deal. <laughs> Damn, she has so much power in this house. <laughs> give it to her anonymously. Looks good. I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> yeah, she's proud. Nah. She appreciates it. They put that together on their own? That's amazing. Wow. The, the drive and initiative of these kids. I didn't know because I needed you to provide this exposition. More legends. Is there a Ghibli movie for this as well? A reasonable solution. Shinzo <laughs> Oh my god, he's got Erwin Smith flashbacks. This was a dark legacy. What about boiling heart into turnip juice to save a woman's life doesn't make sense to you? That's not a great bargain for the youth. Like, she never met him. He just died. That actually is very Attack on Titan. <laughs> life is cruel. Ripping out your heart and turning it into juice and drinking it is reminiscent of my last relationship. What does the princess do with that information when she wakes up? Gee, thanks, <laughs> stranger. <laughs> And that's what matters. And now we have your attention. Ultra romantic. Wow. All right. I'm starting to believe. <laughs> Airtight logic. I have all the anecdotal evidence that I need. I hope this doesn't end with her drinking Miyuki's heart juice. Get over it. <laughs> yes, get over the whole premise of the show, Alex. Oh, but he will notice. Kawaii soul. <laughs> the Evangelion text, though. Yeah, wow, look at this reflection. Though it's relatable. I mean, who hasn't spiraled like that? Ooh, that was intriguing. That was fun. That is uh, like a really great insight. The whole game of the show was initially framed around pride and worth, but a lot of it is masking their own fears of their own self-worth. Pretty much most of what Kaguya has built herself around is the image that she's been handed, which is deeply unsatisfying because it's not something she created. It doesn't actually match her desires as like a growing girl, which is a really bizarre trap to live in because she's working so hard to defend something she doesn't even believe in, but she doesn't have anything else. So I understand why it's going to feel life or death. Then Miyuki has actually built a lot of the things that Kaguya wishes she had built. He's more connected to who he is and 
what he's doing and his vision is freer to explore himself in that way, but he suffers from feelings of, of lacking status, not being worthy in the sense that Kaguya is very valuable. This is maybe a really bizarre connection, but I feel like this actually ties in with the connection about whether or not you need material possessions at the beginning of the show. There are certain games that exist in life. And I think maybe it's really important to determine which games you actually want to play early on. Because I think there are only two good options. It's not playing the game at all and really finding a way to be okay with not being in that game or striving to win that game. I don't think there's an in-between. You know, I think what a lot of people do is torture themselves by secretly wanting to win, secretly wanting certain things in their lives like status or money or power or relationship prowess or whatever, but don't actually know how to go about it and so never actually get started along those paths. And so they're kind of torn because they're aware in some level level that they want those things, but are telling themselves they don't want it. I think it either has to be, you really find a way to rationalize it, really find a way to understand it and accept it, that you're just, that's not something you need and feel that on a soul level, however you you can go about that, or to actually be on that path and feel like you're making progress. The middle is hell. Miyuki and Kaguya are going to be great for each other, but one thing they'll never be is a solution to each other's problems in that way. I mean, there are ways that it can be helpful, but the extent to which they can bring each other into each other's worlds is directly correlated with the amount they themselves can grab with these things internally and do the difficult work of understanding it or taking action towards it. The danger for them, which I think is a danger that exists for a lot of couples that have complementary things in this way, is thinking that the other person is a solution for these things. And it's clearly not. I mean, Kage's journey is Kage's journey. And I think one of the reasons why obsession forms is when people make the other person, the person they're attracted to, the last hope in their hearts for the things that they actually want. <laughs> <笑>ギブンハート。魅力的だと思ったし。こら。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。
Oh, do it. He's definitely reaching up with this one. You gotta go for it. Yeah, you'll be mo more upset if you don't do it, though. Uh, his... Oh, the faith in him. Kage's hopes are also largely riding on, on this. She wants to see it happen. Kage wants to see him confess. You're talking a big game five seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go. Good stuff. We're all in Ishigami's corner. Now that she's framed it like this, it's gonna be extra difficult to ignore, thinking about it in terms of her own cowardice. She, what, she can't unsee that now. Oh, you know, just live my life, having a great time, causing mischief. Got all these balloons, no thanks to you. This is huge. So much riding on this festival. For a lot of people. <laughs> well, this is looking good from the audience perspective, but I'm sure they'll find a way to stumble over it, fall on their faces. Why don't we do this in the States? This looks like such a blast. And dual confessions arc. I'm pumped. What great build up for this. Ooh. I'm actually the most excited to see what happens with Ishigami. I mean, I, I expect he's going to get rejected, which is fine. There's something else at stake that Kage is directly expressing, which is overcoming a key fear. That's a tough but great spot to be in, I think. You, you know, you can rationalize away the feelings you have and all the things that you, you deeply want as things you don't need, that, you know, you're above or whatever, and you can get away with that. Some people can get away with that forever. But like I said, that's sort of hell, you know, that limbo between being okay, not having something, or not being great at something, and really deeply wanting something, that when it comes up to the surface, when, you know, there's a glimmer of insight into that, that, well, actually, I'm just hiding, or I'm just afraid, it's tough to go back from that. I feel like those moments are really key because you kind of are what you practice. And if you practice continuing to lie to yourself and shy away from things you actually want, areas of life that are calling you that are in essence sort of mini hero's adventures, hero's journeys, you build that up. You get used to ignoring it. And that is kind of ignoring the call of life. It's a denial of spirit and character. So it's not really about the outcome as much as it is about better connecting instinct and true desire to action. That's what's at stake for both of them right now. It's not the relationship, it's courage. It's becoming the people they want to be. There's a much bigger game that's being played, even if this is not really the, the most essential element of their lives. It is fundamental in that the ability to do this, the choices they make, the habits they practice, will inform many other areas of their lives. Both Ishigami and Kaguya have been built up in really intriguing ways in that regard, because Kaguya desperately needs to take a step out of basically everything, you know, her whole world and her whole schema of thinking, but is too terrified because that would be total chaos, total loss, loss of self, total loss of status, complete vulnerability for someone who is used to being ultra protected and guarded and sheltered. And Ishigami, who is kind of afraid of his own talent or afraid of responsibility or something like that, you know, he, he kind of wants to coast because it's easy, it's not challenging. He's been deeply burned in the past with other people. He's afraid to love, he's afraid to want to date. Speaking from my own experience, there are a lot of moments like this that I just force myself, you know, I just gritted my teeth. And I would say, you know, most of the time, most of the time, I don't know, a, lo a lot of times, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. But in a more fundamental way, it was good because I kind of proved myself to myself. And also, crucially, you kind of realize that in moments like this, there there really are no stakes. There, there are only stakes if you're thinking super short term. Real danger is never doing it. Never even trying. It's a cliche, but I think it's really true that the things you regret most, barring any wrongdoing, like if you're doing things really horribly wrong, those are going to be deep regrets. But assuming your actions are kind of neutral and harmless, the things that make me feel bad about myself or regret later are things that I, I didn't try. I rarely regret trying something in good faith and in good conscience and it failing just just because I like met the challenge to some degree, if that makes sense. And it gets easier to do that as you realize that if it's something like a confession, you're gonna survive, probably.